If this aircraft misses one of the three cables, the pilot has only a split second to react and save himself and the aircraft. Fortunately, the pilot made no mistake and executed a pinpoint touchdown on the flight deck. While it seems like a cakewalk in the first place, arresting an aircraft is a no room for error task. With that said, this episode is going to reveal a pile of interesting information behind recovering the world's most powerful fighters. Aircraft carriers have very short runways. A Nimitz-class carrier has a landing area that is around 350 feet long, which is only 4% as long as a usual runway. Thus, the aircraft requires external support to reduce its speed. Arresting cables serve this purpose by decelerating the aircraft. They convert the immense kinetic energy of the aircraft to hydraulic energy. All the Nimitz-class aircraft carriers are equipped with the MK-7 arresting gear system. MK-7 Mod 3 can be seen in most of the Nimitz carriers, and the latest Nimitz-class carriers came up with the Mod 4 upgrade, which is pretty much the same system, but with certain improvements to the components. The arresting cables are laid across the deck, giving them the name Cross Deck Pendants. The Cross Deck Pendants are made out of high-strength steel with a diameter of 1.4 inches. Each cable is rated for a minimum braking strength of 205,000 pounds. The pilot lowers the arresting hook during the final approach and targets a hit wire, usually the third wire when having four cross-deck pendants or the second wire when only three wires are available. A positive engagement hooks the arresting cable and drags the cable along the runway. The cross-deck pendants are connected to two purchase cables from either side via terminal couplings. The purchase cable connects the cross-deck pendant to the arresting engine and transmits loads from the pendant to the arresting engine. The arresting engine is a hydro-pneumatic device. The purchase cables are reeved around a set of fixed and movable sheaves. When the purchase cable is pulled during the arrestment by the cross-deck pendant, the movable sheave moves towards the fixed sheave. This movement operates a ram moving into a cylinder filled with hydraulic fluid, ethylene glycol. The counterforce generated by the ram movement decelerates the aircraft. An MK-7 Mod 4 arresting engine is capable of absorbing 48 million foot-pounds of energy. All the equipment related to arrested landings is maintained and operated by the Air Department's V-2 division, which comprises Aviation Boatswain's mates equipment. They are among the crew who wear green-colored flight deck jerseys. Aviation Boatswain's mates enter the rollout area as soon as the aircraft comes to a complete stop. Once the recovery is completed and the tail hook is free from the cable, the gear puller guides the pilot to retract the hook and taxi the aircraft from the landing area. A deckage operator responsible for retracting the cable operates a lever to retract the cable. In the meantime, other crew members use push bars to guide the cable to the flight deck sheaves when the cable is retracted by the deckage operator. Each retractable sheave houses a pulley that feeds the purchase cable when the tail hook is engaged and the aircraft is moving forward. As the name suggests, they are retractable to flush with the flight deck surface when not in use. During aircraft recovery, all the retractable sheaves are moved to their lifted positions. This raised position helps to keep the cross deck pendants off the flight deck. In addition, wire supports are also placed underneath the cables in between the sheaves to keep the cables lifted. The cables are raised from the deck by a minimum of two inches by the leaf springs. This increases the chances of the arresting hook catching the cable. As the two waste catapults are also located on the landing area, waste catapult officers are responsible for keeping the catapult accessories free from the landing area. Usually T-shaped rubber catapult track slot seals are installed on the tracks to protect them from debris. These slot seals should be removed prior to performing any recovery. Furthermore, catapult slot buttons are installed on the tracks to prevent the arresting cable from falling into the track groups. For maximum effectivity, the arresting engine can be adjusted for different weight categories. Similarly, the Fresnel lens, or meatball, is also adjusted to match the approaching aircraft category. The arresting gear officer, or AGO, is responsible for overseeing the entire topside and below deck recovery operations. Apart from the arresting gear officer, the landing signal officer, or LSO, also plays a pivotal role in arresting operations. 
Prior to each recovery, the LSO reports to the air officer when the deck is ready for the recovery operations. They maintain voice communication with the approaching pilot and guide the pilot during the approach. The LSO holds a pickle switch that manually controls the wave-off lights and cut lights in the Fresnel lens. Wave-off lights are blinking red lights that signal to abort the landing and go round, and the cut lights signal pilots to proceed with the landing. The head of department, or air boss, who manages the pry fly, is responsible for all aircraft operations and reports to the carrier commanding officer, who is the captain of the ship. Regardless of a plethora of safety protocols, a bustling flight deck remains one of the most hazardous places on Earth. Thus, all the deck operations are recorded by a total of 10 cameras located on the island and the deck. The Integrated Launch and Recovery Television Surveillance System, or ILARTS, is the system that caters to this requirement with closed circuit television and video recording. The ILARTS records approaching aircraft and feeds the video to the landing signal officer display system with glide slope information. In the ILARTS of the Nimitz class carriers, a dedicated camera operator operates a main camera from the island camera room. But in the newest Ford class carriers, the camera operator is omitted and the recording is done by a distributed aperture remote video system that comes with 18 cameras positioned at the key locations. Arresting an aircraft is very much a team effort. From the pilot's perspective, landing the aircraft on a pitching deck and catching the hit wire has always been a challenge. But the team effort of the carrier crew makes this Herculean task a bit easier and a lot safer. And that's a wrap for today's video. We hope you enjoyed this episode and there are more videos coming, so consider subscribing to The Intellect. See you next time.